Hello, today I want to share with you my hummus recipe and this is a dish that's very near and dear to my heart so before we get into the recipe itself I wanted to discuss a bit my history with hummus and also my philosophy to making hummus. So my history is that I used to eat several hummus almost every day then my wife got me a food processor and I started making it at home. When I was eating sabo hummus, I noticed that they would infuse the hummus itself with a lot of the primary flavors of the dish, meaning that um, instead of the chickpeas really coming through the hummus, they would use all the other flavorings to kind of make the hummus more of a dip than, uh, than what I, I would consider proper hummus. Um, as I would go to Israel and uh, visit different restaurants, I would realize that the actual hummus itself at a lot of these restaurants was actually much more subtle. It wasn't as packed in with the different flavors as you would get at a store brand. It showed off the garbanzo, the chickpea, more so than what all these other spices that we had put in the mix. So these are the three pillars of my hummus making philosophy. You want to make it fresh so that you make it when the garbanzos are warm. That adds a really nice element to the dish. You want to make it so that the chickpea is the star. You don't want to pack too much flavor into the hummus itself. And if you want to add flavors, you can stack them on top via other elements. And lastly, you want to make it cheaply and quickly so that you can have this hummus very frequently. So with that in mind, let's get started. To get started, I like to soak my chickpeas overnight. So I fill up a bowl about a third of the way up with dried chickpeas and then the remaining portion with filtered water. Now make sure to use filtered water or some other high quality water here because this is going into your chickpeas and you don't want any bad ingredients going in. So you let that sit overnight and once morning comes you can go ahead and strain out the water and rinse the chickpeas with a little bit of running water. And once you've rinsed enough you can transfer the chickpeas to a pot and then fill that pot up with water. Now because I let this boil for 45 minutes uncovered, I lose a lot of water and therefore I like to fill up the water to about an inch and a half over the chickpea line. To that I add a teaspoon of baking soda to help soften the chickpeas and then a teaspoon of salt for seasoning and let that come to a boil. Now once it does come to a boil, some foam forms at the top. I go ahead and scoop that out there's no need for this, I throw it out. And then I reduce the heat to a high simmer and let that go for 45 minutes. So these are the ingredients we're going to be using to make the hummus today. I have 330 grams of fresh garbanzos that we just boiled, 130 grams of sesame seeds that we're going to be using to make tahini. Um, on top of that, once we start mixing all the ingredients together, I'm going to be using 4 tablespoons of olive oil for the tahini a teaspoon of salt for some flavoring, about 10 grams of garlic, uh, around 50 to 55 grams of lemon juice, and then anywhere from 40 to 50 grams of chickpea broth, which you please collect this when you make the, the chickpeas, just because it's really useful as a vegetable stock or as, as a thickener in other soups. So the way I like to start my hummus is by making the tahini and the way I do this is I roast the sesame seeds for anywhere from 4 to 5 minutes on a very high heat making sure to mix them around constantly I don't want any of them getting more toasty than other sesame seeds and then once they're all toasted we're gonna plop them into the food processor and mince them until they're a very fine paste but let's get started Okay, so once you got the sesame seeds to a nice powder like this, what I like to do is wipe down the walls a little bit with a rubber spatula. And then I'm going to add four tablespoons of olive oil. Some recipes called for uh, grapeseed oil. But in an effort to keep everything simple, I just go with olive oil. I 
and then continue processing for another two to three minutes. So we have a tahini. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna keep going a bit longer. And now we can start adding the other ingredients of the hummus. So now I'm preparing the other ingredients that are gonna go into our hummus. So as I mentioned earlier, you want about 10 grams of garlic. Um, so I have up here 11. I would recommend if you go over, uh, go over by a couple grams, maybe 11, 12, maybe 13. But don't go under 10 grams of garlic. Next I'm gonna be adding a lemon. And I'm gonna be adding 55 grams of lemon juice. And I hope you find it helpful that I'm providing a gram measurement because I think a lot of other recipes say one, two lemons. As you can see, this lemon is huge. Other lemons are smaller and only produce maybe 20 grams of juice. So out of this one, I think we can get about 50 to 55 grams of juice. And then lastly, to this mix, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be adding some chickpea broth. So ideally you want the lemon juice and the chickpea broth together to add to about 110 grams. So I'm going to be adding about 55 grams to 60 grams of the, of the chickpea broth. Okay. Alright, so now that we have our garlic, lemon juice, and chickpea broth. I'm gonna be adding it to the food processor, along with the garbanzo beans, and about a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna let this run for about four to five minutes. Let's see how it came out. Looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. And the next step is just to enjoy it, so I'm just gonna plate it. And by plate, I guess bowl. So get a little swoop in there. And get a couple garbanzos on top of that. A touch of olive oil. If you want to add some color, I recommend putting maybe a little bit of paprika or sumac on there. Now to properly enjoy hummus, I recommend that you have it with a uh, good fluffy pita and some kind of pickled goods, uh, pickled wok. I personally prefer olives. Um, but when you get a pita, make sure that it's really fluffy. You don't want any flat kind of pita. Um, I get this fortunately here in Los Angeles from a place called Bibi's Bakery on Pico and Robinson and they produce really good pitas. If you can't get pitas of this caliber in your neighborhood, I recommend you make some of your own. But these keep very well in the refrigerator. I keep them in the freezer for two months at a time. So I'm gonna heat up a little, a little pita right now. And there you have it. We have a wonderful hummus ready to eat. This fresh pita that smells really really good and this is good for any time of day breakfast lunch dinner just go right in there oh well wow. mm. this is so good oh my goodness I'm very impressed I, I always outdo myself the best hummus in town mm. So guys, I got distracted eating all this great hummus. I just wanted to mention before we go, this hummus as I mentioned is really good fresh when it still has that lingering heat from the boiling and the sesame roasting that we did. But we have a lot of hummus left over here and you probably won't be able to eat this all in one sitting. So when you keep it and you keep it in the refrigerator, do not microwave this. 
embrace its natural progression from warm to cold. Once you cool it down a little bit, the toastiness of the sesame seeds will really come through and transform it to a different type of hummus, which is not bad, still very good hummus. It's not the same as this, it's a different experience, but both are equally great. So I hope you guys try this recipe out and enjoy it as much as I did.